So uh, with anterior hip replacement surgery, uh, what we're trying to achieve is not to uh, detach or, or cut any of the muscles around the hip. Uh, whereas in most other forms of hip replacement surgery, uh, some part of the, the muscle around the hip joint has to be removed in order to get access to the joint. Um, the other difference with anterior hip replacement surgery is that the patient is lying on their back during the course of the surgery, um, which makes it somewhat easier for the anaesthetist, uh, but also, in my view, makes it easier in terms of assessing uh, the leg length during the course of the operation. In more traditional type of hip replacement surgery, the patient's lying on their side, and I feel that this makes it more difficult to assess that leg length accurately. So uh, because we're not cutting any of the muscles around the hip, um, as soon as the anesthetic has actually worn off, those muscles are working pretty much straight away and being effective. Um, I find that patients are in somewhat less pain as a result of this, because if you cut a muscle, um, or, or if you tear a muscle in a sporting activity, it's an extremely painful uh, thing to happen. I think if we're not doing that, then the, the, the pain is easier after the operation. Um, it's said that there's less chance of dislocation uh, after anterior hip replacement surgery. And that I think is related to the fact that these muscles are working straight away. Um, there is, uh, a faster recovery uh, following the anterior hip replacement surgery. And again, this is related to the functioning or the good functioning of the muscles off after the surgery. Patients are up on their feet, usually on the same day of the surgery and will often go home, uh, if not on the same day, then the following day. Um, it also means that the rehabilitation and the uh, input from a physiotherapist is a lot easier uh, to, 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 to do. Well, there's obviously the usual risks and complications of any uh, uh, hip replacement surgery. And, th and this is no different with anterior uh, hip replacement surgery. So uh, the risk of infection is still present. The risk of damage to nerves and blood vessels is still present. Um, and ultimately, the risk of dislocation is also present. Um, but, you know, these are these are things that are uh, you can only uh, do so much about. Um, but other than that, there aren't any other major disadvantages of an anterior hip replacement surgeon, surgery compared to a, a more traditional approach. So I'd say that most people uh, who come to see me are um, appropriate to have anterior hip replacement surgery. Um, if a patient is uh, severely obese, then it is much more technically demanding, but that would be the case with any, any other type of uh, hip replacement surgery as well. Um, it certainly makes it more difficult. And the other situation where I would be uh, reticent about uh, undertaking anterior hip replacement surgery would be patients, usually much older patients, who have a very poor bone quality or severe osteoporosis. Um, they would be patients I would not want to do uh, anterior hip replacement surgery on. So uh, we would normally expect patients to be, as I said earlier, up and mobile uh, on the same day, if possible. Um, and they would usually be uh, fully weight bearing. Um, they might be using crutches or sticks initially. Um, and they would probably go home the day after the actual surgery a date itself. Um, over the ensuing three to four weeks, uh, I would expect their mobility to improve to the point where they then don't need to use the sticks. And usually by about four weeks, three or four weeks, most of my patients are walking independently. They're not using any walking aids at all. Beyond that, <clears throat> usually by about six to eight weeks, uh, patients have pretty much fully recovered from their surgery and are at a uh, place where they can do pretty much anything that they were doing uh, or want to do.